Welcome to Minus Wolf Airs. I'm Christopher Brown. In today's episode, we're focusing on the, one of the most significant gatherings of municipal leaders in Manitoba, the AMM Fall Convention. Every November, over 800 delegates from across the province come together for the Association of Manitoba Municipalities Annual General Meeting. This year, and later this month, from November 25th to 27th, the convention will host elections for the AMM's Executive Committee, including the positions of President and two Vice Presidents, each serving a two-year term. One of those candidates running for the Vice President of the Manitoba Municipal Association is Brad Saluk, Reeve of the Rural Municipality of Brokenhead. We spoke with Brad about his candidacy, his vision for the role, and what he hopes to bring, if re-elected, to Manitoba's municipalities. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. Brad, thank you so much for sitting down with me and talking about your bid to be re-elected as the next vice president of the Association of Manitoba Municipalities, or I should say one of the two vice presidents of the Association of Manitoba Municipalities. Uh, I got to start off with a simple question. Why did you decide to put your name back into the ring? Plain and simple, uh, you know, I really, truly uh, adore the or love the association. I love the people that I'm representing, and, and I believe that I'm I'm good for the association because I the one thing I bring back is experience. And I know that there's a lot of key issues that we had on the table. Uh, we just went through a provincial election last year. We drove a a hard campaign with that to uh, hit home to the parties on what the needs were and. Um, you know, right now the we have a new government in power for the last year. We uh, they had a lot of promises that were on the table, and now I'd like to see them follow through on a lot of these promises. There was a lot of talk and uh, a lot of things that were were promised to us last October, and as our members are quite aware that we have not been seeing a lot of the stuff that were, was promised, and just basically the amount of experience that I bring to the table, I've. Uh, been here for this will be my fourth election that I'm going into uh, six years of being with the uh, executive team and like I said I I know the ins and outs I know the municipalities that I represent I've traveled through almost all of the 137 municipalities and I don't think there's uh, one person that's running against me that knows Manitoba as as good as I do I've been able to sit down with our members and have real good communications and and I'm an open and friendly guy to talk to. And whoever wants to call me, it's, you know, I'm always there to take the call. You're, you're as friendly with your municipal leaders as you are with the podcaster from Calgary. So I would I would uh, agree that you're friendly as heck. Um, yeah. I want to talk about some of the issues because you, you mentioned that municipalities are going through a bit of a transition period right now with the new provincial government, but also municipal issues in, in themselves. What do you see as the biggest municipal issue that needs to be addressed from an AMM's perspective if you are reelected as the one of the vice presidents? You know, I'm going to go back and I'm going to touch on the four topics that we were talking about last year in the provincial election when we we uh, we met with all the parties. And right now, our biggest key ask is the funding for municipalities. The funding was frozen for a number of years. And prior to the election, the Conservative government lifted the funding and the new government has committed to following through with the uh, the funding, except we do not have an accelerator involved in it because, you know, we've been operating on 
2016 dollars for a number of years and we've been having to do uh less or more with less and we're really asking the government to try and come up with a, a program that is going to work for all parties we need something that's going to be a, a funding model that's not just based on a per capita basis because we know that there's a lot of municipalities in rural manitoba that have a large geographical area with a very small amount of people that they're representing so a per capita issue will not work on on that matter but you know that's our key topic is to try and get a funding model that's going to work for the 137 municipalities across manitoba because each one of us as municipal governments we have to run a balanced budget and we cannot run a deficit and the only that way that we can generate money is through tax dollars and if we you know keep increasing our taxes year after year you won't see us being re-elected because we'll be ousted by the new crew coming in thinking that they can do a better job until they get there hmm. sorry just had to cough there for a second um okay. you talk about this as being an issue that's not just this year's problem not going to be next year's problem but it's been something that's been going on since 2016 when the funding did uh, funding increases did uh, freeze are you able to go into a meeting with wab canoe the premier of the province or ian bushy the minister of municipal affairs of municipal governments and have those frank discussions because i'm when i'm talking to members they they want someone who's going to call a spade a spade go into those meetings and say we need to fight for municipal issues and municipal uh challenges can you do that yes uh the fact that you know we've had a chance to meet with premier canoe a number of times and sit down with him and, and discuss the issues which we did not have in the past with other premiers so we're very fortunate to have the relationship that we do with this premier and you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm going to call a spade a spade. When we have municipalities that are suffering for having to deal with road infrastructure and drainage and not being able to get any more tax dollars based on these issues, I'm going to fight for that because I know myself, I've been a member of council since 2005 and the decline of operating dollars since I've been here at the beginning is horrible. Like there's, there's only so much that we can do and our ratepayers get ticked off because it, everyone says they're paying taxes, but what are they receiving for those taxes? And I've had sidebar meetings with Minister Bushy and, and the Deputy Minister, and I believe that I've built a relationship with the ministers of this government. I've built a relationship with the past members of government. But you can't come in there hard-handed and try and ask for things that uh, you know are going to be ridiculous. you got to be open-minded and, you know, you you get i can't think of the scenario right now but you get more flies with honey than something else right so this is when i need to be aggressive i can be aggressive but you know i've seen through the years that our members have been suffering and are suffering and this last year that we've had this last year that we had uh spring like conditions in winter that caused a whole bunch of road damages across the province where municipalities had to accelerate the budgets or take out a reserves in order to buy extra gravel just to maintain the status quo of what they were operating with from the past year and i know myself we had to do that in our municipality and if that happens again our reserves are tapped right out so we ne definitely need to go to the table and we need to come up with a funding model that's going to be good for 2025 and 2030 and 2035 we need you know the dollars that are the accelerator that's going to work because we know that the grader that we bought 10 years ago is not the same price that we're paying today yeah. it's you know 25 percent more we're paying more money for fuel we're paying now we got the carbon tax that we got to deal with there's all these things that are coming up that we have to look at how we can generate tax dollars to provide services to our people and that's one of the key points that i've, I've been uh, pushing along and as a vice president, I would work strongly on trying to commit get to getting more money to municipalities to to their budgets because it's unfair to all of us. 
I, I briefly was looking over the list of resolutions that AMM is going to be debating at this year's convention. And when you look at the uh, issues that the municipalities are put forward, two areas are kind of prominent. And one is policing and one is uh, bail reform and sort of the challenges that uh, municipalities are facing with this repeat revolving door offenders that are in your community. This is more of a federal and provincial issue that you're going to have to deal with. But how do you see your role in advocating the federal government along with the provincial government to address this challenge that rural municipalities are facing when it comes to police presence, but also the revolving door of bail reform? Yeah, this is not just a Manitoba issue. We've seen this across uh, Saskatchewan and Alberta, and we've met with our counterparts in uh, from RMA and, and AM and SUMA, SARM, and we've discussed many of these topics and how do we you know, combat these issues. As a group, we're working strong with FCM to try and, and get to the table with the RCMP because we know it's not a, just a provincial issue, but the fact of the catch and release, we have repeat offenders by the time they're arrested, they're back out on the streets and doing the crime again. And where we have municipalities that are lacking RCMP services to say that uh, when they call an RC or 911, it may take two hours to three hours to get somebody there to see what's happening or if they even come at all. That's unfortunate because as Manitobans, we all pay towards the RCMP in one way or another. The problem is that there's not enough members working in the departments. We're short-staffed all across Canada in the amount of RCMP officers that are being recruited. So it's a matter of trying to deal with the bail reform and get the catch and release program. You know, let's have the discussion about the catch and release because we cannot have repeat offenders back in the streets within 12 hours of, of uh, committing a crime and doing it again. It's, it's giving our residents or our, our our delegates the feeling that they're not being listened to by the RCMP or they just don't care. And we need to have uh, strike up a deal with the RCMP. And I think we, myself and uh, Vice President Valentino, met with the members in in Calgary at FCM. We had a very good discussion to start out with, and I think we just need to keep moving that that discussion forward. That there's a lot of municipalities that aren't even uh, recording their incidences because they th don't think anybody cares anymore. So we need to have our municipalities or our, our people reporting the crime so that all these crimes can be tracked. Because if we're not being tracked, we can we don't, don't have anything to come to the table and fight back with. Now, you talk about being heard. And I was at the AMM convention in Brandon, the spring convention earlier this year. And I had the pleasure of speaking to many of your different members from across the province, from northern to southern to east to west. And one thing I heard from a lot of the smaller rural communities and even the urban centers was it's, it's often like we're not being heard at the provincial level because with Winnipeg being the largest uh, city in your province, the issues of the city is often dominated in the provincial legislature. How do you see your role, yourself in the role of VP again in addressing and making sure those smaller urban centers or even those rural communities like uh, uh, the arm of Brokenhead are addressed at the provincial level? Because when I speak to the, your members, they want someone who's going to fight for not just the large cities, but for the smaller communities as well. Agreed. And, you know, I, I've had discussions with Minister Weeb on this many times already and trying to come up with solutions to have, you know, better services across Manitoba. We cannot have, we're in southwestern Manitoba that it's taking two hours to three hours to uh, get a police officer there when they do a 911 call. It's... It's a fact of trying to entice more younger people to get involved in the RCMP and to be willing to work in rural areas, not just to be uh, willing to work in Winnipeg or, or smaller cities. We can't forget that rural Manitoba is part of Manitoba and, and it's a good place to live. And, you know, I think there's a quality of life around rural Manitoba that if we educate the young officers coming in, many a times, you know, their first stint is, say, to do a northern stint, and then they can go anywhere they want after that. Why should it be a northern stint? Why can it not just be 
a rural stint in Manitoba where there's a shortage or a lack of officers that need to be present on, on the, you know, they have to be on the pavement every day. And regards to the, a lot of things that are happening, it, many of them are bogged down with paperwork in the detachment, filling out reports and whatever, if they caught a uh, drunk driver or whatever. Sometimes I've, I've talked to many members where it takes eight to 10 hours to complete the paperwork. That is, is not good. Like we need feet on the ground and we need people visible in the community because if they don't see the cars driving around, that's when crimes are happening. I want to turn to the organization as a whole and AMM as a whole for a few minutes, if you don't mind. And I want to ask uh, about your role. If reelected, what do you see your role being as the reelected vice president of AMM heading into the next two years? Because these Years are the, these uh, the issues that I see when I read through the policies. You're going to have a lot of work ahead of you. What do you see your role being? Is it just a supportive role for the president, or do you see yourself being more engaged and active? No, I think seeing that I've been here the amount of time that I have been in, when I was first reelected, I, you know, I I've seen AMM as a wonderful organization. I, I was always happy to go to the conventions, and I used to be a a district director before becoming vice president. And I truly love this organization. And I love doing what the people that I, I love representing the people that I do. But I think the fact that we're going to have a new president and the fact that it's, I've been here the longest, I have a lot of the information behind me and whether you like me or not, I know what I'm doing and I know how to get things done. And like I said earlier, I'm not going to sugarcoat something if I just want to be politically correct, I'm going to get to the uh, to the meat and potatoes of what needs to be dealt with. And there's going to be another new vice president. Uh, I, I really think this is the time where you, I need to be here to assist with both. And I know when I was first elected to the executive, we had Ralph Graining, who was a uh, VP that moved up to president. And it was tough for him. It was really tough because he was working with two, I would say, greenhorns, right? And it took us at least a good year to get our feet wet, know the files, and know how to deal with the things because we're not just representing our district. We're representing all of Manitoba and the people from all the districts. And when you get elected to this position, you're not representing your municipality or the district that you come from you are representing 137 municipalities and the entire amount of people through Manitoba. And if you're thinking that you're just going to be doing one, one little job, that's not right. Because I know when I first got elected to this position, I did a lot of research behind how long I'd be away from home. And, you know, it, yes, you're away a lot from your family, but we we've met, I've made new family members with this organization. Oh. I think if anything I can take away from this is I met a lot of great people. I met you. I met, oh. uh, you know, no, it's like, this is not something that you can put a paycheck to. It's working for your people. And when you see things getting done, when you see the accomplishments, like for myself in this last number of years, we've seen the highest amount of wins in advocacy so What's far. been the big win for you? What's the one you look back on? You say, you know what? E even if I'm not reelected, I'm happy we got this done. You know, over the number of years, we we got the the granting doubled, and I can't I can't remember the name of the program now because the the new government they change it every the, week. <laughs> yeah, they changed the name of the the govern the program. But I know at one time it was a a. $15 million program, we got it doubled to 30. So it really helped a lot of municipalities across the province to get things done that they weren't able to accomplish in the, the past. And like I said, getting that, getting that grand double and getting municipalities able to, you know, get this freeze funding lifted was a win. Not saying that it was a huge win, but at least, you know, we're not operating with $2016 anymore. And, you know, we've we've seen other things across the province, like we're still working on Bill 37, where we would like to see a lot of things change with that. 
there's been a lot of things that have been changed in that bill, but we still want to make sure that the government is aware that we are the elected body by the people and we don't want the municipal board coming in and having the autonomy over us and making decisions in our community that they really don't represent that area. They're appointed by the government and whatever they say at that point doesn't reflect the, the, the thoughts and wishes of the municipality that was elected by the day. We are elected by the people. We should have the final say and there's no reason why there's a lot of these people out here right now that you know want everything but they'll want it in their back door yeah like they as long as it's 20 30 miles away that's fine let's 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 go with that right but i believe yeah. that i'm working for all the people and i i feel that i'm the best to be suited for the the vp position because of my experience and because of the knowledge that i have from traveling the number of years and, and getting to know the people firsthand. There's been a lot of changes. There's been a lot of people that have come and gone. Every cycle of elections, we lose good people. We get new people back in. Um, this last election, there was a, a, a huge turnover of almost 50% is uh, again. So I'm hoping by this election that the people know me or, or know me better than they did two years ago from first coming in. And seeing the job that I've done over the last two years with this executive and seeing the amount of wins that we've had working with our team, we've got a great team. We've got a great board of directors. We've got a great staff. We do a lot of work that, you know, we don't get appreciated for, but that's not about it. It's about getting the job done. And when we do get it done, we celebrate the wins on ourselves. And if nobody sees that, well, we just move on to our next file. You you talk you talked in that statement about you being away from your family so much, especially in the job of vice president, because you are traveling a lot, you are connecting with your members. But there's also another aspect that you didn't touch on, but I want to touch on it for a second. You're away from your municipality as well. You're the reeve of the RM of Brokenhead, and that means that role is also a job that you have to do day to day. And the the role of the reeve is not one meeting a month. It's a twenty four hour a day job as well. In your six years as vice president, have you been able to find that balance of being able to balance what your RM wants with what the AMM wants? Yeah, when I first decided to run for the position, I told council that I wasn't expected to be away much. And in the first <laughs> in the first term, I I you know I tried my best to be there for council meetings and, and committee <laughs> meetings and whatever. Uh, I have a strong council. I have a strong uh, CEO that gets things done, and we have a lot of text communications back and forth, the emails that go back and forth, and I'm very privileged to have the staff that I do even from public works to office staff that, you know, I can be away. I know that I shouldn't be, but also in a result of me being in this position, it does benefit our, our municipality as well. We do get to know things quicker and faster that are happening throughout the province. And, you know, I have, like I said, my, this, this last time I said, I, to my council, I will, really wish you would nominate me one more time. And there was no hesitation. They immediately, you know, was, I'm, I'm very honored to be working with the group that I am with, but I'm very privileged to be working with everybody that I work with, you know, from, from all the municipal people that I represent to the staff that we work with AMM and through even all the members that I've met throughout Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and Quebec, it's been just a complete privilege and, I will, I will never forget this day. It's been an honor to represent the people. And I, but when I first decided to run for municipal government, I was told by an old Reeve, "Remember, the people will vote you out if you don't do the job." And I'm, you know, I'm very privileged to be working for the people. I've been successful. This is my sixth election that I ran through uh, municipally, so I feel that. I'm not losing out on the work that I do at home, but I am away from home a good number of days that I should be here. But on the other hand, we are getting things done province-wide and that benefits all of us. 
Before I let you go, I want to turn the microphone over to you for a few seconds and say, ask the final question, and that is, why should people put their trust in you for another two years as the, one of the two vice presidents of AMM heading into sort of an unprecedented ch uh, change in the executive in the next few years? Yeah, like I said earlier, I think that the number one key issue is experience. I've been here a good number of years. I know what's going on with the organization. I've seen a lot of changes. We've, uh, when I first got elected, I had to, I was dealing with one executive director and then we ended up having to hire a new executive director. So I look back in my last term of, I've ran with two presidents, I ran with two vice presidents and I ran with two executive directors. So I'm able to adapt to change no matter how you like it. Uh, I know that some, like I said, some people may not approve of my ratings that uh, there's some things that they thought maybe I didn't accomplish. But once again, it's not about me. It's about a team effort. We work together as a team. And it's even like when we talk about anything that happens municipally, everybody goes to a member of council or, or Reeve and said, why don't you get this done? It's consensus of the group. If you don't have consensus of the group, things are not going to move forward. And like I said, I believe I'm a team player. I work well with whoever I can work with at the table. I've, like I said, I've, I've over the last six years, I've had to work with, well, no, it's three vice presidents now. So, and you know what? I've enjoyed every minute of it. I, I, I can't say enough thank yous to the people that did vote me in, but I would like to be here for another two years and move forward and to see this organization go in another path that, you know, we never thought we'd see before. I'd never expected Cam Blight to, announced his uh, departure and it was a it was a hard day for me because we had a real good work working relationship and myself me, kathy and cam worked really well throw, together can i throw a question in here because you yep. brought up the elephant in the room and i want to talk about it in person. <laughs> not elephant but it is a big loss amm under cam blight has done incredible things and it got put on the map in some sense from an outsider's perspective what did cam mean to the organization from your perspective as someone who worked with him so closely while he was president yeah cam uh when you say cam blight he had a lot of authority he got things done he was able to uh get into ministers faces and and have the meetings no matter what they said like he was very not aggressive, but he was able to persuade his way into having a meeting with different ministers, whether it be with the executive or just himself on a, on his own. But when he first decided to run for president, I didn't know how to take that, but it was a great step forward for him. I know that when Ralph Graining said that he was stepping down, myself and Cam had a discussion on who was going to run for president. And many people thought I would run for president at that time. And I said, no, I, I believe in working together in a strong relationship. And Cam and I had that relationship and I would not run against the individual on a power trip or, or anything because I wanted to be president. I don't want to be president. I don't, I don't, I don't mind being the bridesmaid. I'll never be the bride. I'm very happy with the position that I'm at right now, right here. And the same thing happened when we decided now uh, with Kathy going for president, we sat down and she said, would you want to run for it? And I said, no, it's, it's yours. I, and I just want to say this. I know I was approached by many people to say to run for president, but at the end of the day, you see the sign behind me. I'm still a farmer. Yeah. I farm. My, my farm would be suffering or the organization would suffer as me as a leader because I would not be able to give the full commitment to the organization that I should or I wouldn't be able to give it to my farm. So I'm, I, I know that in this role, I'm capable of doing the job. I've done it for a number of years. My family is able to do work away, work on the farm while I'm away. So I appreciate that. And I'm committed to this position for another two years and I want to work alongside the new president and the, on our staff at the Portage office, because excuse me, I feel that my position here has been an asset to the organization 
And, you know, when we say Cam White accelerated, we all accelerated the yeah. positions because, it, like I said, going back to it's a team effort. We had a great team. There was no animosity between any of us. It was just go get the work done, and we got it done. And I want to continue getting that work done. Brad, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. I said 20 minutes, and I think we're almost at the half hour mark. But I truly want to thank you so much for sitting down and doing this interview. It's a, a pleasure to speak to people who are so passionate about municipal leadership. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in Winnipeg later on this month. And Well, like I said, uh, at the end of the day, if I'm not successful, I had a I had a hell of a good ride. But I believe that I'm a good part of the team here, and I want to be part of the team for another two years. And you know what, like I said, I've I've met great people. And when we talk about Calgary, how Tanine Ruddock thanked you for all the work that you do for bringing the profiles across Manitoba of municipal officials, I want to thank you because you are doing a great job. I've, I've never seen so many people interviewed in regards to what their positions are or feelings are. You do a phenomenal job, and I want to thank you for what you do. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Municipal Affairs. We hope you've enjoyed today's conversation with one of the candidates running for the Vice President of the Association of Manitoba Municipalities. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button or follow button wherever you're listening to this or watching this. Your support helps us to continue to grow and bring you more great content like you saw today. We will also be live on location in Winnipeg from November 25th to 27th, covering the AMM's convention, elections, and all the great things that are going to be happening at this year's AMM Hall convention. So if you haven't already, again, hit that subscribe button. Till next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and we'll be back with another episode shortly. Till then. Mm -hmm.